In Sheffield, property manager Gavin Windle has come to cast his eyes over a three-bedroom house. Gavin hasn't been told what lies inside. No news in this business means bad news. It's been secured up already, so basically there's an environmental problem on the inside, so we'll pop in and have a look. Well, the first thing I itch is the smell. So it smells rotten. The floor's covered. Basically, I can barely get through the door, to be honest with you. It could be worse but not by that much. I can't see anywhere where the, the old tenants had sat. Gavin tries to reach the kitchen. Hardly a dream destination. It's absolutely disgusting. As you can see, the state of the cooker. I don't like to make you toast off of that. There's basically rotting food, fat, just absolutely everywhere. It's just unbelievable how somebody can live, let alone prepare and eat the food in this area. And everybody knows that does this job, you shouldn't really open the fridge, but let's just have a look anyway. Oh, the first thing itches the smell. It's the back of your throat. Plate of leftover peas. I'm not quite sure why that's put in there, because there's not many on there. And the state of that under there is just absolutely unbelievable. Gavin is starting as he knows he'll have to go on. Upstairs isn't inviting. There's just nowhere to move. There's cans absolutely everywhere. It's just not sort of a place that you want to sleep in on a night, to be honest with you. Could this have once been a family home? Obviously a young person's place. Into his aeroplanes as well. You can see there's absolutely stuff everywhere. There's rotting food everywhere. It just feels grotty and it just feels horrible, to be honest with you. This is turning out to be less of a detective story, more like a horror movie. Well, it becomes a bit more apparent when you come up here that it's uh, an older person that's living here. By the look of the clothes that are hanging about, it looks like a, uh, a female. Obviously, by the kettle, the tea bags here, it looks like she's been bedridden. She's probably just been left up here, obviously with no way of getting downstairs or out and about to be able to clean the property. Having to basically live and breathe dirt. It's not the sort of place that you want your mother or your grandmother living if you're supposed to be looking after or caring for her. It's just upsetting, really. It's a shame. Gavin takes the key decision. This is a job for grime fighters Dan and Glyn. It's the start of what looks like being a long day. Later, we'll see how they got on. In Blackpool, father and son, the Hastings team, they're both called Steve for convenience, are on their way to clear a block drain. Like Blackpool Rock, they have humour running right through them. I'm passionate about poo. As you can see with my number plates, turd, and the other one, P00. I'm number one for number twos, and unfortunately, Stephen is number two for number ones, but he'll get there. In this game, let's be honest, you've got to have a nose for it. Oh, that is humming. Oh, nice. That absolutely stinks. Sweet corn. I see it every day in that form. I can't eat it, son. That and red peppers. And now we're looking at peas. A couple of peas. I'm going to end up with no veg on my plate. And the cause of the blockage, the usual suspects. And all it is, it's just toilet wipes, face wipes, and. Baby wipes and stuff like that, really. The drain will need to be jetted with a high-pressure hose. That's ready to go. It's very important that Steve places the jet far enough down the drain. With Steve Senior manning the controls, can Steve Junior take the pressure? Jet comes out, you get plastered. Stephen getting splashed is always good news, trust me. I love it. <laughs> you got yourself a tan. It doesn't smell like them sun creams. It's worth his wages on a Friday just to see his face. Just keep working it. Oh, there she goes. 
There she goes. The scene's over. Time to remove the makeup. As you just seen, I've just been plastered from head to toe in human, and I mean human, poo poo. But a distinct lack of applause from Dad. Don't be so soft. Hardcore. Softcore. That's what I've got to put up with day in and day out. The blockage may be cleared, but Steve likes to be thorough. We're just going to check the, uh, the manhole at the bottom to see if it's, the water's running freely. If not, then obviously it's still blocked. Have you seen the crust on this? No wonder it keeps ah, occurring. There's the problem. Oh, whoops. They've found the main cause of the problem. The scene isn't over. Back in Sheffield, Extreme Cleaners Dan and Glyn are facing up to the mammoth task of clearing the three-bedroom house. Lovely. Let's work on air, Glenn. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, nice. What are we having for dinner? Before getting started, Dan has to carry out the all-important risk assessment. Is it free from vermin? Um, uh, take a guess. <laughs> I'll say no. It's a mistake with rubbish to take it at face value. You've got to get to know it. You never know what you find when you come to places like this. It's been left ages, you've undercover all sorts. It's the David Attenborough moment that Dan finds off-putting. You can see the holes where the mice have been digging, so I think we might find a few. And if we do, I'm going to run like a girl. I don't like rats or mice. And his friend doesn't help. He's just a big girl, isn't he? That's all. I'm a big girl. Yes, you are a big girl. It's a long walk home, you know. I don't have to tell you. There's a bus outside. Too many cooks? Not in this case. Everything's covered in a layer of grease. It's just a bit sneaky. If the fauna don't get you, the flora certainly will. Smell. You get that fatty smell. Weak stomach. Go. Make sure there's a clear way. For that door, because I'll be out, out of it. As we all know, revenge is a dish best served cold. Hey, where do you want to smell? Look that. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Cool. Steady. Can't just stuff like me. Horrible. But Dan's not finished with Glyn just yet. That four, <laughs> four to week old chicken in there. Oh. <laughs> you can take it, go on. <laughs> That is horrible smell. Big horrible chicken. And brought tears to eyes. Dan stays on the alert. You can't relax for a second. Everything's covered in rat droppings. Stay around, I'm going to squeal like a girl. I'm not kidding. Dan and Glyn are making progress, but it's slow work. Downstairs has taken a few hours. Upstairs, far worse will take much longer. In Stockport, our rubbish removals man, Mike Burgess, has a spring in his step. It's his first job of the day. Right, let's go. He calls himself Mr Cheap. Let's mount up, boys. But these are grime fighters of the highest quality. Fine men, not afraid to get stuck in. There may be one or two slips along the way, but by fair means or foul, they'll finish the job. Jeremy Dennett recently bought this house at auction, and he's called in Mike to clear it up Mike, yeah. to make it shine. Right, OK, this is not too bad. On the surface, all looks well. Mike's good mood seems appropriate. Right, come on, lads. Let's show you what's going on. I've had a word with the owner. Yeah, it's straightforward enough. With Alex and Liam providing a little extra muscle, this job should only take an hour. Let's have a look in here. Yeah, what's this door open here? Not seen down here yet. But this wouldn't be grime fighters if there wasn't a surprise in the basement. Ooh, what a right scruffy mess this is. Come on, Ratty. Come on, Ratty. Out you come. <laughs> I hope nothing runs up your leg. 
The job may have got harder. These are choppy waters. But Mike knows how to steer through them. <laughs> Mike doesn't always take the conventional approach, but he certainly gets results. We're strong in thumb and weak in thud. <laughs> Getting rid of the bigger items could prove a little tricky. But Mike has got a plan. Right, guys, we're going to show you a little lesson in uh, karate. I'm going to dismantle this wardrobe by just using one leg. Right, that's, that's the technique. And then you get the back foot. Come on, Alex. Horse kick, that's a horse kick. Nice little exercise, that, Alex. You've passed that course. Mike is keen on personal development and self-knowledge. This time, I want to see your shoulders, yeah? <laughs> like, ah! Let's see you finish it off, Alex. How's my stance? That's it, go on. Lovely. In one. Alex's rank of operations manager has now progressed to head foreman. That's my boy. <laughs> He's got screw loose, Annie. Coming up, the one that got away. So that's where all those wasps have come from. Come on, lads. And how to tame a wild carpet. Come on, let's get the crocodile up. Throughout the country, an army of professionals are continuing to dedicate their daily lives to waging war on the nation's grime. In Sheffield, extreme cleaners Dan and Glynn have made great progress. They've cleared the whole of the ground floor, and it's now time to make a start upstairs. All right, yes. Think he liked his cans of bitter quite a bit. How do you know when you've got a real rubbish problem? When you can hardly open the doors? It's just full of clothes. Let's be calm, but this could be tricky. If there's a rat in here, I'm going to cry. It's a mountain to climb, then a mountain to clear by the end of the day. There's chicken stinks. Cans of half-finished beer. Now that's a waste. Waste of money and all buying it if you can't swap them. So I'm going to get home and my wife's going to think I've got out on tiles all night instead of working because I'm going to stink like a brewery. But it's not her indoors he has to worry about. It's more like fur indoors. I think we've got another, we've got another bit of a rat problem. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Big rats. You can deal with them. It's down here, you can see where they've been nested. See all rat droppings again. Look, loads on it this time. They're everywhere in this room, and she used to sleep in here. We've even got rat droppings on the quilt. So obviously, while she went in bed, they're ruining it all over her. Not a nice way to live. I don't mind seeing rat droppings, I just don't want to see a rat. Don't speak too soon, Dan. Oh, is that what's making a noise? I can't stand them. They don't bother me. Rats. I'll stand, I'll stand in this corner now. Dan is trying not to Tim, give in. See him under that bag? Aha! Uh -huh. Is there look? There's here. Is it? Is it? Aha! Dan's had enough. <laughs> Lynn has to soldier on alone. But Dan has only had a temporary lapse. He's soon back fighting. And before long, victory is theirs. After a few hours, the rooms are empty. Now Dan can show what he can really do with the fogger. It's a machine which kills and cleans across every surface in the house. That's it now, it's all been vaporised and cleared. It's just ready for a deep clean now, so the tenant can move into it. That's all done. See you later. Back in Blackpool, Steve and Steve have put behind them the little problem of the high-pressure jet. 
Now the blockage at the front. Basically there's just layers and layers and layers of sewage building up and then it just backs up. So once all this is cleared down, hopefully that will relieve some of the pressure. With Steve Senior fully in control of the Jetta, there's a fair chance of success. There are times when Dad really does know best. And that's released everything and job's, job's done. Steve Junior is happy to admit that things are looking up. I do love the job. Uh, it's outdoors. Most of the time it's fresh air. It's just not nice when you're getting covered head to toe in human poo. According to Dad, Steve is a very lucky lad. What, what a great opportunity I, I'm giving him. I wish I'd have had it when I was a kid, but I didn't. You know, I had to graft. And he, he smiles, look, he's smiling. You're here to work. I'm working, you're the one stood in the corner with no gloves on. P45. <laughs> You'll see tomorrow. <laughs> it's all about teamwork and good advertising. Number one for number twos. <laughs> Come on, son, let's get to the next Come one. On. In the Cotswolds, there's another father and son team determined to keep it in the family. Pest controllers Dave and Matthew Hayes have been called out to a cottage where some unwelcome visitors have set up home. Oh, we got two. Dave is surprised that there are two nests sharing the same roof space. There's one tree wasps, and then we've got an ordinary common wasps down here. Some people do sell fake wasp nests that says, if you have a wasp nest, no other wasps will build close to it. I think this explodes the myth. But fortunately, Dave's caught them early. And that's a third grown. I expect they'll get considerably bigger than that. Two nests could be more than double the trouble. Son Matthew is still in training, so veteran Dave has to lead the way. You don't mind me doing this one, then? No, you carry on. I'll gladly let him go up there and battle him off. We're caught there, mate. <laughs> right, battle stations. Dave prepares for combat. The trick is to neutralise the enemy before they can launch a counter-attack. Interesting, I hope he has better luck than me. So I got stung the other day. OK, we're going for it. Good luck. Dave delivers the first strike. Yeah. But it's not enough. It's as if they've stirred up a hornet's nest. Success. But there's still that other nest. The battle is over. Time for a debrief. You can see the difference. You see, that's your common moth. It's just like um, papier mache, really. Uh, this one is a completely different kettle of fish. There's all the comb. Quite fascinating. Dave is pleased to have won, but he doesn't look down on those wasps. That is their world. So you can't blame them for stinging you when you, uh, when you come to do it. So. Back in Stockport, rubbish removals man Mike Burgess and his team have made short shrift clearing the basement. With the main task completed, they remove the big items from upstairs, only to discover that man's best friend has done his worst. The dogs have been everywhere in this house, everywhere. You just see it, it's on the carpets, up the staircase. When you start moving it, it starts smelling even worse. It's obviously not built up overnight, has it? So it must have been like this for, I don't know, you'd say months, you'd think, wouldn't you? It's disgusting either way. Come on, son, up you go. Oh, jeez, smell that urine on that guy. With a quick sweep of the rooms, the job is nearly over, but Mike still has time to tame a wild carpet. Now, in Florida, you get these crocodiles that are about eight to ten feet long. 
and this is a similar scenario. So what you first of all do with a crocodile is you dive on its head. Right, I've got it by the head. Liam, just humour him. Come on, lads, come on, come on, come on, come on, wrestle with it, come on, come on, let's get a crocodile out. He's getting away, come on, he's wriggling, he's wriggling. <laughs> oh, he's a feisty bugger. That's it, get a croc up. With the carpet defeated, it's a job well done. That is it for today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Since the filming of the programme, the house in Sheffield has been completely cleaned and is now ready for new tenants. In Stockport, the owner of the house is pleased with all Mike's efforts and is now busy decorating. They've been warned that they've got to be careful. Immediately, the signs are worrying. The lads have been told this isn't going to be a straightforward job. We've been told there might be some drug use and this looks like the room that it's been done in. So you've just got to be careful. There's no needles hiding behind any sofas or cushions or anything. Sadly, it seems, these drug users were also parents. The kids' room, yeah. The previous occupiers have left in a hurry. Not that they're the sort who would have cleaned up anyway. Just a lot of clothes on the floor, baby's clothes. If there are infected needles here, Johnny wants to make sure they can be handled safely. A lot of rubbish in the kitchen. This drawer proves the point. Danger. Well, there's a needle. Forewarned is forearmed. Johnny is proud of his work. Don't mind doing jobs like this. When you see the, the result at the end, it makes you happy when you go home, so at least you can say you've changed, hopefully, someone's life, making the place cleaner. In Dagenham, East London, Bill and Simon, the sewage supermen, are on a mission. A back garden and a bad smell spurs them on. There we go. These pipes could be blocked. Knock, knock, who's there? When I banged that, it was just to check to see if the damn pipe ain't full. And the damn pipe seems to be hello, so it, it's a sign of saying, like, that's empty. The blockage must be underground. This could be tricky. We lift up the interceptor and check that, see if that's, see if that's blocking. Yeah, you want to move the car? OK, then. So I'll give the gentleman a knock. Yeah. But nothing's ever simple, is it? And if it is simple, there are some who make it more complicated. Hi, I saw you just over, mate. Barking and Dagenham sewer team. Is there any chance you can pull your motor back a bit? Pull it back? I would have just pulled it where it is. What? Well, you'll make your mind up. First you want it moved, now you're done. It wants which, to move. Which one do you want done? Don't do it. No, come don't on. Do it. You, give, you told don't me you'd unlock the door. I've got to knock on the door. Don't, don't. Now you're telling me. I'm walking away from you now. Uh, whatever. I'm walking away from you no, now. No, you started the argument. <laughs> I didn't. People are usually helpful to grime fighters. He's going to run you over. <laughs> well, I wish he'd run you over, though. At last, the drain is revealed and Bill can get down to business. We have all the best tools in the world. No, well, just do it. Shut your mouth, you. There can be something very satisfying about a blocked drain. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's full up. Dirty water. Simon's been manning out of bath, because look, I don't like he's out of bath. Yeah, go on. See how dirty that water Go on, is. let's do it, come on. Come on. The bad smell is inevitable, and so are the jokes. It stinks like Simon's aftershave. He buys all the cheap rubbish. Don't fall in there, you might mess your hair up. <laughs> At least I can comb my hair, I've got <laughs> one. <laughs> Nature was cruel to me, all right? Yeah, tell me that. But there's a problem. Why isn't it just going whoosh? It seems like it might be the main, so what Simon's going to do now is go across the road and check and see if the other side's up. How was Simon? Hurry up. Yeah, the mains are up. The mains belong to Thames Water. We're not allowed to touch them. It all looked so good. But now, the hardest part. Admitting defeat and telling those involved. What you got to do now? I've just checked. Oh, yes. Oh, he's beautiful, isn't he? He's kissing. <laughs> Kissing the dog, mm, that's okay, but not very hygienic. 
Well, right, here we go, another job done. Sort of. Okay, well, let's go. Rock and roll. We're still in East London, where a house in Barking is causing concern. It's a mess, of course, but it's also dangerous. Environmental Health Officer Philip has called in his team to make sure it's safe. Enforcement officers Rob and Jenny will need to inspect the grime scene before cleaning can begin. You all right, mate? What we got, mate? Jenny, we've got filthy and verminous OK. It's their job to search for clues as to who's responsible. And that can be a messy business. As you can see, we've got a lot of waste out here. Nice. And we just need to check for evidence now and see if we can find out where the waste has come from. Need to be careful, there may yeah, be yeah, syringes. Yeah. The stuff. problem is, no one knows what they may find. A needle in this haystack? Maybe worse. Just going to have a little nose in here, see if we can find anything. I contacted the landlord, served a notice. Uh, nothing was was carried out, so we decided we need today to come down, get the waste cleared, charge the landlord for the clearance, and try and find any evidence in the waste. It's all old stuff. Oh man! Just as a fault. Bag of condoms. <laughs> There are more condoms down there, look. It's looking more and more. Yeah, like a, a house of ill repute. <laughs> Is it worth it in more? I don't think we need to, do we? No. Oh, oh no way. Don't know what that was. Took a lung full of that, whatever it was. Ugh. Oh, Rob. Don't <laughs> even bother. Oh, that's gross, isn't it? It makes you want to laugh or cry. It's all a bit, nasty, a bit nasty and a bit naughty, isn't it, to be fair? Just absolutely stinks. And now Rob smells a rat. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Oh, look, maggots dropping off of him. Ooh. Oh, it stinks. I'm going to lose it. Get rid of it. Ooh. You know, it comes to something when even the rats don't want to live here anymore and they just curl up and die. This actually has been here longer than three or four weeks. Oh, here, yeah, my pet hate. Look. More stuff? Hey. Super loop. Oh, boo. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Grime inquiries are never short of possible evidence, but does it add up? We found a couple of names and addresses. Well, the address is actually appertains to here anyway. Um, so it means we probably won't be able to trace where the people have gone who were living here first. Nasty, nasty place. Just got to get it cleared. OK, guys, <laughs> we've had a look through. We haven't found anything, so you can carry on, get it cleared for us. Thanks, guys. Back in Wales, Johnny, Peter and Kyle are having to tread very carefully indeed. This was a drugs den. I'm just making sure that there's nothing in here that sharp that could fit me. Rifling through the rubbish, it's now clear what happened. The previous occupiers were told to leave. All right, explains now that they've been evicted and they've obviously been given the notice to get out, to get their stuff out as well, but they also haven't even bothered trying to get their stuff out. It's no surprise that the heavy use of drugs here has taken its toll on normal life. It all could have been so different if they'd been able to lick the drug habit. They disregarded their health as much as they disregarded their home. And I've got some more needles up here again. Might have been used. Still got the needle in it. Found another needle. It's on the back of this cupboard. It's got the covering on, but by the looks of it, it's been, there might be more. Found one in the kitchen, found in here, so it could be anywhere. These needles could still be harmful. Well, you never know who's been injecting themselves with that, do you? So, it could be anything. Hepatitis, HIV, anything like that, really. There's evidence of lives falling apart, and the evidence hasn't been destroyed. I just found some uh, photos of uh, someone uh, with a bomb, which, you know, is used for, like, uh, drugs and stuff. Got to be careful all the time, because you don't know 
the house as you're going into, what the people are up to or what they do. Good mother or father thing to do is it doing drugs around your kids, especially when it, by the looks of it, is hard drugs. It's quite disgusting, really. Like it makes me uh, quite angry to see this sort of stuff going on, you know, around children. There's not much we can do about it, you know. We just have the contracts come in and clean up what's what they've left. It's not the team's job to pass judgment. They've just got to make sure the flat is cleared. Coming up. A rubbish hard man shows how hard you have to be. Let's just go and see how fit you are. I'm going to have a nice cup of tea and uh, you get all this loaded on the truck. And in barking, it's now time for the extreme cleaners to face up to the problem. Right, that's been here for a little while. Up and down the land, a little known army of dedicated professionals are devoted to battling the ever-advancing tide of grime. In Barking in East London, the problems of the former house of ill repute are being tackled. There's excrement, condoms, there might be a few needles, rats, just the usual really. The extreme cleaners have come well prepared. Also, use Vicks just to put in the marks, just in case, obviously for bad smells. Sometimes it's not as bad, obviously, but some properties and garages and stuff that we clear, really, really, really overpowering. It's been sitting there for months and months. A tough job, of course. That's why they're here. Bed sheets, dirty pillars, rotten foods, nappies, dirty underwear. There's plenty of evidence of what went on here. Condoms, more condoms, condoms. more condoms. There's nothing so bad, the rats won't like it. There's loads of little holes and crevices where they can get in, and it's so hard to see. But obviously, when you make a lot of noise, they end up start running around, so we might see a few in a minute. Rat droppings. There's a rat that's been here for a little while. Maggots, uh, flies, fleas. But nothing an extreme cleaner can't cope with. We see quite a lot of them, to be honest, but they end up running off when you're banging about and that. The big ones, obviously they're like the size of cats and stuff, but they're the ones you want to watch out. They start chasing you around the garden and flats and all sorts of stuff. Environment Officer Philip takes a peek over the garden fence. It's obvious there's an additional problem. They've got uh, probably 20, 25 black bags of domestic waste. We can see food on the floor. Obviously it's a big rat problem in this area and it's part of the reason. So I'm just going to have to chat with the, with the person, the resident here. Excuse me, um, I'm from the council. What's your plan with regards to getting rid of them? Because you've got food waste. Maybe we'll, we'll today or uh, tomorrow. The rats are going to come and eat this. There's a lot of rats in the area. You need to get this cleared as soon as possible, please. Yeah, sure. This is a big problem with tenants, leaving waste. He, he says it's from a party, but uh, it seems a lot too much for a party. And the type of waste it is, is probably unlikely. But he's told me you'll get it cleared today, so I'll do a visit back later today or maybe Monday morning if it's not cleared. And if it hasn't been cleared, then we'll take action. There's no time for talking now. This is just a matter of turning this mountain into a molehill. Nice. In the bowl. Where there's muck, there's brass. There really is. Hey, look. My lucky day. Been chewed by a rat by the looks of it. Pays for breakfast. Take it down the bank, you never know. The scene has been transformed. Even the molehill has been removed. Philip oh, is pleased. Great job. Oh, it's a million, million times better, that is. Hopefully the residents will take a better care now. We'll get a nice table and chairs out here and they've got a garden back. Ready to go again. Excellent. The house has been fully cleaned and before long can welcome a new, more deserving tenant. Stockport rubbish removal expert Mike Burgess finds his truck is in rather a tight spot. Well, Alex, get back. That's it, Alex. In this business, it's essential to have a good team. Come on, Alex, hurry up. And today, Mike is joined by Alex and Liam. We'll have a look at this mess in the back garden. 
Joanne? The key to good leadership is meticulous planning. Hello? It's all a matter of knowing who, when and why. Hey there, love. Getting the right name Hello? is essential. Yeah. Is it Joanne, isn't it? It's Susie. Su Susie, sorry, Susie. Do you want to tell us about how, how you've uh, how you accumulated all this? And um, I've only been here about 12 months. It's just from doing up the house. Yeah. Cardboard boxes and paintings yeah. and just um, some packaging off right. some appliances. And you want all of this going? Do you want yeah. the... Um, this metal thing, the shed. The yeah. shed, yeah. Yeah. Uh, shed yeah. As well. All right then, we'll uh, we'll start clearing it out, and uh, we'll let you know when we're when we're all done. All right, thanks. That smile from Alex is a good sign. That's it. The metal shed may look a bit of a handful, but Mike and his team won't easily be put off. We love rubbish. We love it. We love it. Ah. One of the advantages of being the boss is you decide how much to put into the work. This is the third job of the day, so we all start to slow down a bit. Uh, obviously these uh, younger lads a bit fitter than what I am. Mike keeps up standards in fitness and keenness. I do get called now and again the drill sergeant, and the reason I'm the drill sergeant, I keep an eye on, on the lads' fitness levels. Alex is back, uh, he's been off for two weeks. He fell out of his bunk beds with his Batman pyjamas on. I got need playing football. I was in that playing football. Dr Mike wants to check on the patient. He's getting back to his level of fitness, but we may have him running behind the truck from job to job just to uh, get his pins up to shape. So, Alex, uh, you know, uh, do you think you're coming up to my level of uh, fitness? I think I'm far past it. Fa honest, far right? past yeah. my level of fitness? OK. Let's just go and see how fit you are. I'm going to have a nice <laughs> cup of tea and uh, you get all this loaded on the truck. In Aberystwyth, with Johnny, Peter and Kyle see an end in sight. The drugs den has almost been cleared. It's looking good. Not far off there now, we've cleaned all the other rooms, it's just these sofas. Just having a look to make sure there's no uh, sharps in the sofa before we actually carry it down. There are inevitably ups and downs in this job, but at least there's variety. It's just something uh, different every day, you know, it's... Uh, uh, you know, the longest you're out of job is, you know, a couple of days, really. So, you know, when you come in in the morning, it's like it's going to be something different, whether it's window cleaning or something like this. Uh, blood jobs, crime scene places, you know, it's just different all the time. You know, it's pretty good. Johnny and his team think they've got the measure of this place, but there's one more surprise. Looks like the handle off a pickaxe or sledgehammer or something. Pickaxes and needles, it's all in the day's work, and it all has to be cleared. Just got the carpet left in there then, just give all the rooms uh, sanitised to kill any germs. At last, the property is safe for the decorators to come in and renovate. It's another transformation from the horrors of the past to healthy living. Job well done, yes. We need grime fighters. They make the world a better as well as a cleaner place. In Stockport, Drill Sergeant Mike Burgess has kept his team up to the mark. The metal shed should be a pushover, but maybe not. And can it be removed? You know what? I don't think we're going to get this on the truck. What are we going to do with that? <sighs> Mike won't be thwarted. Where there's a will, there's a way. Hey, how's it held together? It's pot riveted, I think. But um... anyway, you need to get your training levels back up. So... Let's just see. <laughs> hey, where's the big hammer? Right, so we're going to do a few action shots for you lot. Let's face it, Mike likes to show off. When 
victory is declared, lessons have to be drawn. Alex is invited to praise his boss. Alex, what I was trying to do here is show uh, a man doing a boy's job. Alex may need a bit more convincing, particularly if they can't get it onto the van. You've got, got a new name for him now, Monkey Boy. Go well, on, up you go. You all right, Alex? <laughs> you all right, Alex? <laughs> Alex is good and brave. <laughs> Pain in the <laughs> working with the boss. He's, uh, he likes to do everything his own way, doesn't he? Yeah. And uh, basically, we do it better. <laughs> As you can see, he's a little bit mad. Have you not finished that a little bit? Yeah. yeah What's going on here? Eh? Come on, let's get it finished. Jesus. Mike's bark is far worse than his bite. Hi, Susie. Hi right, there you go. Are you happy with that? Yeah, that's great. We're getting a dog soon, as well. In a couple of months, so we need to get it all clean and tidy. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. All right, yeah. thanks all right, for then. doing that. Lovely. Thank you. A full van and a happy customer. Perfect. But where's Alex? Since the filming of the show, the arborist with flat is now far more Des Res than Drugs Den. And in Dagenham, Bill and Simon are keeping the drains draining. Here we go, bingo. As I'm mousing along like uh, I have a whistle to myself, I can't whistle, I can't sing, but you like to make a bit of row as you go along, just to let people know you're out and about and trying to get their streets nice and clean. With the sun shining over the suburb of Dunstall and only a smattering of litter to attend to, Lou's allowing himself to feel positive about the future. I think I'll last till I'm about 93 or older. Uh, just keep plodding on. As long as they keep wanting to pay me, I'll keep coming. But just around the corner by the local school, things take a turn for the worse. I've walked up the road thinking, well, it's not too bad at all. Come past this tree. And look what greets you. This is unbelievable, this is unbelievable. Bottles, cans, lino, chip boxes. Look, a bag full of bricks. Now, why would anybody come here and bring a bag full of bricks? Eh? They must have got an earlier carrying that here. What a disgrace. There's a bin there, and they've not even put anything in the bin. It's looking like Lou's day is about to fall apart and the state of the bin doesn't help. And what they've done, they've put a green bag in here and the kids have come along and set fire to it. But amazingly, Lou seems to be regaining some of his composure. And by the time we leave here, it'll be spick and span, you'll be able to do a bit of camping on here. In Wolverhampton, litter picker Lou is mustering his forces to tackle the unsightly fly tip near the local school. Hey, oh, this is young Gary getting at the cab now. He'll still do this job. He's the babby of the section. He's YTS, are you? Just finished. <laughs> Just finished. Oh, they've took him on full time now, apparently. They've started to pay him. He's absolutely loudy. What do you do with all your money all the while? Spend it on the house. He like, oh, spend it on the house and a few cans. That's what he likes. <laughs> with everyone present and correct, Time to hatch a plan. My plan of attack at the present moment is uh, I'm just going to pass these few bricks across to uh, Gary and Sam and chuck them in the motor. See how young Gary is, always likes to take more than anybody else. Like Sid in Leicester, who's also feeling his age. But there's life in the old dog yet. I've come here, I've seen this mess today. I've jumped over this fence, I'm 62. I've still got a bit of a jump in me. People don't seem to realise they think I'm old and knackered, but I am. In about another 10 minutes time, 15 minutes time, it'll be nice and clean. Come two weeks time, it'll be as bad again, but why worry? And there's even time for Lou to pass on some of his experience to the younger members of the team. Up, pick, in. Down, clip, pick. In. It's so simple, a baby could do that. Well, Gary does it, don't he? <laughs> With Gary and Sam making good headway, Lou can take a few moments to admire their work. 
Steady on, Gary, watch your bulges, all right. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's happy as a pig in s**t, eh, Gary? Look at that. When Lou's in a good mood, he'll take a pop at anyone, even right? a passing friend. Have you left all this rubbish here? We're keeping our eye on you. You look the type. See you, mate. Have a good day. Ah, oh, he's off down the road, bend his gyro, I suppose. As Lou predicted, within about 15 minutes, the area is cleared. Looks nice and tidy. Perhaps the next person that's walking down here with the can suddenly goes to chuck it, thinking, oh, no, that's nice and clean and tidy. But will they? That's the question. Will they? It's up to Lou and the thousands like him to clear up the fly tips and rubbish from the streets. But then enforcement officers like John across town in Wolverhampton must take action against people who cause this menace. Today, accompanied by two community support officers, John's clamping down on offenders in the city centre. Today's all about um, making people aware that uh, dropping litter is a criminal offence. Um, if they're caught dropping litter, that they uh, will be receiving uh, a £60 fixed penalty. If they don't pay a fixed penalty, they will go to court and we've had um, many successful prosecutions. Trying to find the culprits is proving difficult. It's uh, unusually tidy and it's unusually quiet. But there's always someone doing something illegal. Got it. No backplate on a private eye vehicle. It's an offence. John can now move on to his pet hate, cigarette butts. This is the problem that you have with cigarette ends. It stinks and we're walking through other people's ashtrays, really. When it rains, they get washed down the drain. The water from the storm drains gets into the water course, gets into the reservoir. Are we sort of drinking our water through somebody else's cigarette end? That's a nice thought. Finding smokers is the easy part. And even though this lad has dropped his cigarette end, he's standing on it. But that's not an offence until he walks away. The offence is and leaves, he hasn't left it. He's standing on it. Smoking's not what it used to be. He moves on and John pounces. Excuse me, mate. Can you just come this way, man? My name's John Eccleston. I'm a enforcement officer of the council. I've just observed you drop a cigarette end onto the floor. You will be receiving £60 fixed penalty. Do you understand? Yeah. He seems rather relaxed about receiving a £60 fine, but others aren't so accommodating. £60 pound for the offence of dropping litter. I'm not no, excuse, me, excuse, sir, me, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Can you come back, please? Calm down. Calm down. No, I'm not going there. Calm down. Stay there, sir. Things calm down, and John issues the fine. It may be sixty pounds, but if it's any consolation, all the smokers caught get a free portable ashtray. In a Gloucester field, pest controller Andrew Beddoes and friends are tooling up at the farmer's invitation. We've got some wood pigeons that are attacking a field of rape, but the pigeons are knocking it back so bad that something needs to be done about it. So what's the strategy? We're basically looking for an area where you've got a bit of a flight line, and that's where the pigeons will fly over. They'll follow a certain route. And then we'll split up into three places and get some height set up. What we can shoot. But what have the pigeons done to deserve this sort of treatment? Well, you can see as far as the eye goes, it's been hit by pigeon. There should be leaves. There should be leaves on. Uh, and you can see it's been pecked at and eaten. The pigeons won't come if they can see humans, but they might if they spot some friends. Pigeons will fly over, see the decoys, which they think are other pigeons. And, uh, and basically join the flock to eat. Because obviously if there's pigeons here, the other pigeons that are flying over think, oh, it's safe and it's good feeding. Decoys in place. It's time to get lost. What Steve's doing now is, is creating a hide that we can stand behind. Because even the flash of our face, the flash of our hands, it will put the pigeons off. It looks like the lads are preparing for an invasion. If the pigeons do come, they'll be flying high and fast. OK. All they've got to do now is shoot straight, which is easier said than done. <laughs> so pigeons are quite safe today. But it's not long before the decoys do the trick and lure the birds within range. Yep, that's one down. There's one coming round to your decoys, round from your, on your right.
Unlike some pests Gary meets in the course of his work, pigeons are very good to eat. See, another one for the pot. Uh, and one that's staying off the farmer's crop. It's mission accomplished, and for Steve, satisfaction all round. For some people, this is pest control, but I'll get the chance to come out in the countryside and do something I really enjoy doing. I worked in a factory, and I wouldn't do it again by choice. <laughs> no, thank you. And there's a free perk with the job. Best thing to do with pigeon breast if you're cooking it, if you slice it about the thickness of a potato crisp, fry it in hazelnut oil just till it's nice and brown, and then put it on a bed of spinach, and then just drizzle some, some cream over the top of it that's got just a hint of garlic. Absolutely beautiful. One of the finest meats you'll ever taste. All in all, then, what a bad day's work. Mm -hmm.